Welcome to the first in a new series of spring vlogs. Not only have we got 48 hours with him and me on the park lake, we'll be talking about how to re-spool your line when you're on the lake. I'll be showing you a little bit of kit that I use which helps dramatically with doing this. And also we'll be talking about everything carpy, everything spring-like and how I go about my how I go about my fishing in spring and the thought my thoughts towards spring helping to put more fish on the bank for you hopefully. So without further ado, roll that new intro. Well, it's the first time you've come across my channel and you like these type of videos and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon and you'll never miss another one of my uploaded videos or live streams again. So yes, we're at the park lake. The old pork chop's got his coat on, which is a little bit nippy. Barra's loaded and we're all rocking to roll to go and find some fish. There's no one else in the car park, which doesn't surprise me because it's been absolutely freezing. We've had beach from the east too. It's been minus four, minus five here. I've had snow, blizzards at my house a couple of days ago, but we're in spring. The first day of spring today, would you believe? 20, was it 21st, 20th of March? And it's bloody freezing still. Minus one tonight, so we're gonna be up against it, that's for certain. Hence why he's got his, uh, his little camouflage coat on. And we've got loads planned for you. In this series of videos this spring, I've got loads of kit, loads of how to do things, how I approach my fishing on the Alien Lake, on here, on a few other lakes as well. So, all to play for. I'm gonna wheel the bow around. I'm gonna go and try and find a swim on the back of the wind. See you soon. Right, welcome back. Well, we've ended up the total opposite end of the lake that I normally fish. A swim called Lorries. Now, if you can see out there, there's an island out there. Behind that island, there's a, like, a little bay. And this current bun's right up at the moment. It's beautiful out in the, out in the sun. But in that windward bank, I'd walk around there and it's pretty damn cold and has been. That's the way it's been blowing the last three or four days when we had the snow and the ice and the minus fours, minus fives. It was, um, oh look, little snozzles just poked out down there. Little, little head has just poked out. So I'm talking to the camera as normal. So we decided to come up here. It's off the wind. It's quite flat calm out there. Here he is, look. What's that rig boy? Here he is, look. He's come out to say hello. Survey is the main, as they say. Right, back on the fishing. So yeah, it's pretty flat calm out there, and there's been a few fish out this wind that are out this swim. All the bivvies up, got it all up, got it all ready, got everything sorted. Rigs are all ready to go, all ready to rock and roll. Three inch stiffies, put heavy leads on, because obviously I'm going a further distance. Two whites, one pink as usual. I'm gonna bang one out towards the end of the island there. It's like corner that comes around There's a bit of sun going in that bay there's another bay around the left there and the other two are going to be going alongside the island up but look at that up there making all that racket while i'm trying to talk to you so yeah we've got lots of open water the cold wind's blowing down there water temperature is surprisingly enough 7.6 i think we have minus four minus five here about three days ago so just shows you with that light levels that the water's warming up because we've had like nine, it was nine driving down in the car today when I eventually got here because the M25 was an absolute nightmare as per usual. Two and a half hours to get here. Me and the pork, look, look, me and the pork chop, that's it. It'd be, have a little look round, it'd be in there and you won't see him for the rest of the bloody 48 hours. So, yeah, it's a nightmare on the M25 as usual. Biggest car park in the world, you're not wrong there. So, I'm going to get the rods out, going to re spool tomorrow. I'll show you a nice little bit of kit that I use that makes respawning so much easier, whether you're at home or you're on the bank. So we're gonna have a look at that tomorrow. But what I wanna do, what's time now? It's almost half past three. Don't get dark for another six, well, three hours. <coughs> um, yeah, he's in the bag, yeah. Look, look, look. Yeah, little, little wolf then, look. 
That's it, he'll be done in a minute. You going in? Go on, get in. Look. Don't take a blind bit of notice. Go on, in you go. In. Look. Go on in. Don't care, mate. Look. He's his own dog, him. He don't care. Whatever I tell him, he does the opposite. Does the opposite. Right, so, yeah. I'm going to get up. Look at him. Do you see him then? Go on, do that again. His paw was in the bag. Look. Let's get him a treat out. Keep him happy, look. Let's get him, let's get him a treat out. Can't get in him, look. Look at this, look. This is the way of getting back in there, watch, look. Look at him sit there. Watch, look. Go on in, get up. Oh no. That's it, he's out. He's out. I'll tell you a little story about him. You can see, look, I've got rigs everywhere. They're all hanging up all over the place. He's diving in around them, he's moving about and all that. When he was a little puppy, oh look, he's getting so bloody sudden himself now. Ah oh dear, that dog drives me mad. <laughs> Bless his little cotton, so he wouldn't have any other way. But yeah, when he was a little puppy, I was tying up all these joddies and everything, oh, seven, eight years ago. I had them all on the side, baits on them already, and he was only a little puppy, he was sniffing around. And you know that moment when I looked at him, he looked at the bait, he looked at me, he looked at the rigs, and he went to take one. And he took one, and he took a choddy in his mouth, and I was like horrified. I thought, oh my God, this is down the vets, this is, oh, opening him up, everything. He looked at it, he put in his mouth the choddy, had a confused look, shook his head, spat it out. I thought, cheeky sod, even he's doing the bloody, doing me rigs. So as, after that, I didn't really use the choddies that much anymore, because he was, um, he showed me they weren't that good, but I did catch a lot of fish in them in the end. It was just, uh, since then, he's never been near a rig again. So I told him off, I went, no, like that. I told him off, and he don't even bother looking at rigs now, sniffing them. I can leave them on the side there, he's just lying them. Look, look at that cheeky sod. He's pouring it. He's doing everything with it. You ain't getting no more in a minute. Right, where was I? So yeah. I'm gonna get the rods out, I'm gonna get sorted, tied all three up at the same time, so I can get all three out in one go rather than coming back, tying it up, recasting out, disturbing the water. We get it all done. Tomorrow we're gonna to look at the um look at respooling. We're gonna have a little look back at the GTHD by Garner, which I use. And we're gonna respool the we're gonna respool the reels up on the bank, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of electrical kit that helps you no end, which will save you time doing it. Right, I'm gonna crack on, I'm gonna get them out and I'll chat with you soon. Well, welcome back. We've had a nice cup of tea. We're all sorted. It's almost dusk. It's more or less dusk. Look, the sun's going down. Paul Chops, more active than I've ever seen him. He's got his little coat on, and I'm excited to say that I've seen one out there. I've seen one. Sitting there, having a cup of tea, looking out over the area, I've got all three baits, and I see one, head and shoulder, boom, like that. Couldn't believe it, thought I'd seen things. Just goes to show you, doesn't it? That light level, spring is here. Spring is definitely here. Even though we've had freezing cold weather, snow, ice, the water is warm enough and the light levels are just spot on. More light, more warmth. I mean, that water temperature, 6.9 it says, which is more than warm enough. I remember last winter when it was freezing cold, over Sanders, we was catching them at 7 degrees, 7.2, 6.5. So that's more than warm enough. They're, they're, on, they're on the move, they're active, they're about. You know, to see one, when I really won't expect to see anything because of the minus temperatures. I mean, it's going to be minus one tonight. Minus one. I feel it's starting to get cold already, ready with that sun going down. Put my jacket on a minute. I've even got the front of the, the brolly on. So I know it's going to be cold. I've got my parabolic heater. I've got my Coleman. I've got my merino undergarments on. But it doesn't seem to bother the fish. Everything switches into action. All the ducks are moving about. There's all like ants and, and flies and 
you know, mozzies and midges all buzzing about. The grebes are getting together, starting to mate. The pike was, were, were spawning last week, which is the first sign. So, you know, spring is here. Spring is definitely here and they're waking up. So guys, by the time we watch this, which is a few, which is about a week, about a week later, normally, I mean, it's Tuesday now, I put the video out next Monday, looking at long-term forecasts, it's gonna be double figures. They're gonna definitely be on it. It won't be long now before they all start coming out, I can tell you. It's April in a couple of weeks' time. A week's time is April. A week, it'd be April. All bets are off. As soon as that water temperature gets 10 degrees and above, then I'm even gonna be having the fish meals on and doing things with the liquids and the powders and the putting more bait out and everything else. So, look, I mean, look, everything's active. Look at those ducks going crazy. They're all chasing each other, getting ready for pom-pom time, isn't it? You know? They're getting jiggy with Mr. Biggie, innit, for everything. Spring is in the air. So, and seeing that one was like, blew my mind a little bit. So I'm mega excited. We've got four air hours. Well, not four hours, two nights now. One day, one morning, two nights. And we're going to try and catch one for the first session on the spring series, that'd be mad, wouldn't it? Right, I'm gonna get the dinner on. We're, we are trying the new um, Mrs. B. I said to Mrs. B, but someone on the live stream said to me, oh, check out Aldi's chicken stir fry, Thai chicken stir fry. Because I've been, if you remember last week or the week before, we had the uh, Asda chicken stir fry, which was lovely, so this week, Mrs. B went to Aldi and said, oh, look, she rang me up and said, oh, that, that uh, chicken stir fry you talked about, someone was saying, I'll get you a couple. Stick one in, the, one in the fridge and you can take one fishing with you. So I've got that tonight and I've got it for tomorrow night as well. So I've got two nights of it. So if I don't like it tonight, I'm pretty well stuffed. We're on malted milk biscuits if um, I don't like it. So I better like it anyway. So whoever that was who said, get yourself on the Aldi one, if I don't like it, you're in proper trouble. But I think I'm going to love it. So we'll be having a look at that later on tonight. I'll be having that, cooking that up. Sun's going down. And uh, all is good with the world. We've seen one. There's no one else on the lake. Not a single person. How mad is that? You don't blame them though. Two days ago, all that ice and beasts from the east too. So, right. I love you and leave you. I'm going to crack on. I'm going to keep watching and looking tonight. Because I've got a feeling... We might, that might not be the last one that we see. So, if I don't catch up with you in the night time, I'll see you in the morning. Very quiet last night, had a couple of little liners, it could, oh, could have been anything, pike, roach, may have been carp, but look at that, current buds out, beautiful day, absolutely beautiful, it's going to be double figures today, 10 degrees they reckon at high, and lots of sunshine, so it's got to get them fish moving about, hasn't it? What's the water temperature? Water temperature dropped down about 6 degrees last night, and it's up to 7.5 already, that bit of sun that we haven't seen this bloody spring yet, it's finally popped his head out and the water temperature's rising. So I see that one yesterday, remember we see that one just for dark, couldn't believe it. It was, um, I was buzzing when I saw that. I thought we might have had a chance, but it did drop down a minus two last night. That was bloody cold. And I suspect, even though the sun coming down my face feels lovely and really bright, the back of my neck, that bit of wind which is blowing is quite cold. So it's still quite chilly. I wouldn't want to be on the end of it, up there, because I suspect that that wind is pretty damn cold. So I'm going to uh, reel in in a couple of hours. I'm going to leave them out there, leave them out at about midday. Then we're going to go through and we're going to change. We're going to re-spool all three reels on the bank, and I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, we have a little little tool, little Berkeley line stripper, which is an absolute godsend. It's about a tenner off eBay. As always, I'll put a link down below so you can have a look at that. But it helps, it speeds up the process unbelievably quick. So when I get back, I'm going to probably go and have a little walk around, have a look in the snags around there, 
See if I can see any fish. May even have a move. Don't know. Not too sure. But I think I'm in the right area. I see that fish anyway. So that's where we're at. That's what's happening. He's out and about. Look. He's having a little munch or something. His little bone and that. Yeah, hopeful. Still one more night left. So, yeah, anything could happen. Especially after seeing that fish yesterday. It, um, it's buoyed me up a little bit. You know, even though I knew it was going to be minus two last night, I think it might have been minus three. But it's, it's good to see that they're moving about, that's for sure. Right, I'm going to crack on. I'm going to sit and watch, get another cup of tea down me, snuggle up to the pork chop in there, and um, get ready to respawn my reels. See you in a minute. Well, welcome back. Reeled the rods in, got a quick walk, had a look about, and didn't really see a lot. So we're going to stay put, but what we're going to do is we're going to re-spool our reels. Now, if you remember, about a year ago, I started using the GTHD from Gardner in a 15 pound after I was recommended it. Spooled it up, did a review on it. I'll stick the review of the GTHD up here, or it'll be up here, so you can have a look at that. So it'll give you a little insight into the line. Uh, that was an initial review. So I've used it since for the last year, and I must say I'm very impressed with it. It, it. It's we've stood the test of time. It, it's I've used it in you know weedy waters on the Alien Lake. I've used it um, all through the winter on the Park Lake and on Sandhurst uh, and lots of different places really. And it's performed really really well. But as all things, it's time to change it. I should have changed it probably a couple of months ago, but I got a little bit lazy. But it still worked as well. It's lost a little bit of colour like they all do because of the sun and it's just you know the the, the color in in the line just generally leaks out over time so yeah it, it's got a little bit lighter and a little bit brittler but it's performed really really well but as i said it's time to rechange it so that's what we're going to do normally i'll do this indoors normally i'll get myself some lukewarm water put the spool in there tie it onto the reel and wind it on you know, it lubricates the line, expands it, gets a little bit of water into it, so it beds in a lot better, and you know, gets that little bit of liquid in there ready to, uh, so the casting's better. So as we're out on the bank, what we're going to have to do is, we're going to have to put it in the water. So first thing I'll do, half an hour before I'm going to re-spoil on the bank, I'll stick, I'll stick it in the water. What you can do is put a lead on top of it or put a rock on top of it, like I have a big heavy stone to submerge it for about half an hour so it gets a bit of liquid in there. You know, it, 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 it's more pliable, it's a little bit softer, even in the cold water temperatures, and it goes on the reel a lot better. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna strip off the line, the old line. Now you can do this with any line, it doesn't have to be GTHD. You can do this with any, any, any line. And a little bit of kit that I've used for many, many years it's one of these. This is a Berkeley line stripper. They're about tenner off eBay or Amazon. Again, as I always do, put the links down below so you can go and have a look at that or even get one. And what it does is it strips the line mega quickly. Look, you hear that? Strips it really quickly off the reel. So that's the first thing to do. It takes minutes rather than takes you 20 minutes if you're doing it by hand like you normally would do takes literally minutes to strip a reel and get it ready now what I do is I look out for that knot that I've already put on because I know exactly how much line is going to go on to the reel so I strip it down to that knot I tied when I initially put the the line on before so I do that strip it off really quickly with a Berkeley stripper then I tie a it doesn't really matter what knot you're going to use because you're going to be 200 250 yards down down the spool. So I just tie an overhand knot, tie it on, uh, well, a back to back grinner is what I tie. Which I tie for all, if I'm doing any bits of line, always tie a back to back grinner. But you can tie any knot you want with that initial one. Keep some tension on it, not too much tension. I just want it in bed nicely onto the reel so it goes on there nice and, you know, let the reel do the work, let the me mechanism in the reel on the spool actually line lay it down. So that's, what I, so that's how I do it. I put it on like that, and then I don't overfill the spool. I fill it up to the lip, and that always does me. I found if I overfill it, then you, you tend to get line wrap and line fraps around the top of the ring and all that type of stuff. So 
that's how I do it. That's what do I'm going to now do now. I'm going to do that. I'm going to respawn all three reels, and that's how I do it. So don't forget, check out that initial review on the GTHD because it shows you how I how I spool that line onto it at home with the loop one water. Right. So I'm going to crack on with that. I'm going to respool all three rods and then get them back out there. Look at him. Look at that little pork chop. He's got his bone and everything now. He wants to come out of play, doesn't he? Look. He wants to come out of play. He's looking for something to hide the bone now, look. God. A dog's life, eh? But it looks decidedly cold down there. That um, sun's going down about an hour before dark. It's definitely turned colder. It's beautiful today. It's up to about 9, 10 degrees. Them fish must be moving around. Got to be moving around, they have. I didn't see any more today. Didn't see any more, but I've had a couple of like little single bleeps on my rod, which is tightest to the island when it was warmest. Which makes me think there's fish moving around the island, so you never know. Something might happen tonight or early hours tomorrow morning. It's going to stay four or five degrees tonight, they reckon. So it's the warmest night for about a week. Water seven temperature? Degrees. 6 .9, 7 degrees. Very, very cold. No, well, no, it's not very, very cold. It's dropped about half a degree since yesterday when we got here. Day before? No, day before we got here. No, what am I talking about? I'm talking absolute tosh and I. Yesterday, when we got here. Oh look, he's having a dig about now. He's hiding his bone, look. He's hiding the bone. God, what, what must go through his mind? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, we, so, not a lot's been happening. Looks good, st I'm still confident. You've got to be confident, haven't you? In the bay over there, it's got a bit flat calm. It's looking nice over there. I've been popping up there every now and again to have a look, see if I see anything moving with my Polaroids on or anything jumping or anything, but I haven't seen anything. It was it was good to see that one yesterday, but nothing since then. Respalled the reels earlier on, as you saw. Hope you can get some little tips there, especially that little gadget. It's good, isn't it? I tell you, it just whizzes it off like you wouldn't believe. It's done. Before, I used to sit there indoors and just, or on the lake, and just wrap it around my hands. It used to take bloody hours. But that, Wang, it's done it in, in less than a minute. It's zoom, it's zoomed all up. Oh, look, he's going to walk now. Oh, nice of you to join us. Oh, no, yeah, he's going for his evening walk. He's going to be murderous when it's warm, isn't it? He's going to be walking around all over the place. going to have to keep him on a proper long lead. So, all to play for. Still got one night, still got another one of them. I tell you what, I'm quite impressed. I can't. The Audi Thai stir fry chicken or the as the stir fried chicken. Can't tell the difference which is good. I think they're both very, very, very good. So check them out. I'm having another one of them tonight. Again, just put it in there, fry it up, brown it. You know, put put your vegetables in there, your stir fry stuff, your little sauce on it, and it's lovely. It comes up all in the ridge monkey, all done. Lovely. And it sits well, that ridge monkey, so much better on that boolin stove. You know, that one which we had a look at about three or four weeks ago. Sits really nice on there, so yeah, I'm having that again tonight, and that was absolutely gorgeous. Thanks, Mrs. B, if you're watching. We're gonna have that again. So as I say, all to play for. You never know, something might happen. You know, light levels increasing. First day of spring was yesterday. What can I say? You know, it's um, looking at the forecast for next week. It's gonna be double figures and threes, fours, fives at night. So it won't be long now, guys. It won't be long now before they're they're having it or starting to have it. It's a little bit late this year, I think. I think last year, I think, they, they were starting to come out. Around, they were actually probably about the same. Starting to come out about this sort of time. Different lakes over the country. It looks nice out there. It looks cold on that window, I must admit. It does look cold. I wouldn't want to be up that end. So all we play for, I'm going to sit, have a cup of tea, watch the sunset. And, um, well, as I always say, hopefully we'll see you in the middle of the night. If not, blank the blank checkbook and pen. See you first thing in the morning. See you soon.
Welcome back. Current buns out again, look at that. It's gonna be an absolute beautiful day today. All the geese are pairing up, the midges and mozzies are out, the grebes are doing their thing together, but no fish last night. Nothing at all. I had a few liners, so they're definitely moving about. They're definitely waking up, and we see that one when we first got here, a couple of hours after casting out. So hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, with that weather warming up, let's have a look at the water temperature, it is 7.6, 7.6 degrees, it is. 7.6 degrees, that's as warm as when we first got here. So, let's put that away down there. So it's on the up, it's on the up. Everything's moving, it's got a springy feel to it. Everything's moving about, the coots are diving down building their nests and everything, it just feels like spring is just at its infancy, you know? So it won't be long before them fish are coming out all over the country. As you can see, the rods are on the dance floor still. They're sitting there. All the barrels packed up and ready to go. And pork chop's raring to go, he is. He's having a sniffle and snuffle around, but he's raring to go. So we're gonna keep on keeping on. It really does only take one bite. And we'll see you next week. So thanks for watching the vlog, don't forget if you like these type of videos and you want to see more of these type of videos don't forget to hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell notification icon and you'll never miss another video again. See you for the next vlog.